Hey, this is Brad Dyke saying hi to you and just letting you know, hey guys, uh, this is a hardware segment and I created a monster, basically in a nutshell. That's all I'll say. What is this monster I'm talking about? Well, in a nutshell, as you can see here, it's quite a beast. Why do I have these guys built this way? Why not? I mean, they're just laying in a box, right? So as I look here, and as I see stuff here, and I'm observing what's going on here, I decided to go to the next level, which turned out to be quite a fiasco, personally, and built myself an environment using true motherboards as blade servers. Why? Why not? As you guys remember my pet project of the Dell 40, uh, 7040s mini PCs, in which I took out of the case housings and put them here and are fully operational and working and they've got resources such as these USB 3.0 cartridge sets and of course they've got all the other things down here below too to use but basically that's the little baby in the room so I decided to make the big version of the small version and here I've got four ASUS motherboards and that's cool because I do like ASUS motherboards the best of a couple of different variations and chipsets and this is a, an IT operations nightmare, but what the heck, right? You know, basically they've got 16 gigs here, 16 gigs here, 16 gigs here, 16 gigs here. And they can emulate exactly the same thing. Now, the funniest thing in the world, this monster, as you can see here, is exactly as the actual Dell mini PC environment. That's right. Same processor and same amount of RAM. 1 gig network connections and baseline video capacity, which means they have GPUs on board and GPUs can be utilized. But for these older motherboards, they do have onboard video. Uh, it's very, very simple, basic uh, video outputs, and I only use them to baseline the interfaces. And I'll have to use PCIe standard uh, boot disks to be able to keep this to a low profile. I've got L angle power outputs here. And this is the back actually because I don't want this stuff coming from the front and uh, we'll probably do it more like this is the front right here we can see the fans of the stack and then you know the cabling goes off to the left and the cabling goes off to the right and out of sight not going to use any of the advanced sits, uh, SATA sets or anything like that not going to work it's not going to be functional uh, it's going to be strictly M.2 probably uh, that way I can avoid the problems with dealing with our wonderful experience of NVMe, which will not work very well on some of these motherboards. But anyways, I thought you guys would like to get a kick out of how this is. And hang on a second, I'll rotate it around so you can see the backside. Okay, so I've turned it around. And as you can see, the outputs flow pretty easily. And I've got HDMI down here versus 15 pin, 15 pin, and DVI, DVI, DVI. But all in all, it's a good overall setup. It works. It's functional. I'm not going to complain. I have like 10 more motherboards, but I don't want to have this thing going to the ceiling. But as you can see, you know, this is what it looks like. And they all have working ports on them for network wise. And that's really all I'm going to use. I'm not going to use USB out as well. Uh, worst case scenario, all I'm going to do literally is I'll put one terabyte um, and yeah, I'll put one terabyte splits in each of these at uh, M.2 SATA. And they'll share out in resources for local, but then they'll have access to the TrueNAS NFS storage for their virtual instances. Um, this would probably saturate the 10 gigabit to 10 1 gigabit connections that I have. I finally actually technically have a reason to go to 100 megabit. But do I really want to? That's a good question. But I thought you guys would get just a kick out of this. And uh, I wasn't kidding when I say think outside the box. I used, again, just standard plastic nylon style um, spacers, which are threaded to the same as the motherboard. They are completely uh, non-conductive, and so they, they afford the capacity for the system to be sound. Uh, there is a grounding on the actual power outputs up here, and um, they will meet the requirements you need, but... Uh, I'm not going to screw too much around with that. I'll just have four uh, four power supplies 
that take care of those needs with extended cable sets and make them vanish out of sight as much as possible. Now that's pretty much it really. Um, I may or may not do another video on this because it's pretty much a recap of the mini platform. Uh, it's just slightly different, that's all. So with that being said, um, I thought you guys would get a kick out of this little experiment. It's, this is only a small little video process that I've discussed. Now the one thing that um, would be interesting to see is better L-form cable management. Um, once the not once the nodes are built, there's no need for video. That's just to do the preliminary interface, which the video is over here on this one down here on the bottom. Uh, I'll be able to do the rest of it pretty cleanly uh, without too much difficulty. And yes, this is kind of wasteful. It's not wasteful because it was sitting in a bag, static bags, and I decided, what the heck? This is cool. It looks monstrous and has the ability of doing things. Now, cable management is kind of a pain in the butt to do because if this is the front, going to be the front of it, then all this just needs to go out of sight, right? And all you need to do is have a USB and a video connector if you have to connect up. And, you know, this is fairly stable, but it's not super stable. That definitely has my attention, but so far it seems to be holding up pretty well. I can manhandle it without breaking it. That's the good news. Now, the other thing here is this is PCIe 3. All these boards are, are 3 series, which is good. Um, wouldn't have been so good if they weren't. Now, this is my oldest board right here. And it only has a single channel, but that's okay. I don't need any more than one channel. And, um, you know, I'm not using this to mine anything. It would be, really wouldn't work, to be honest with you. By the time you put all the overhead into it, it wouldn't pay out. But I thought you guys would get a real kick out of this. And I thought, you know, it's just a short little video that will help you understand the nature of how these systems really are all the same. A lot of people are standoffish. They don't want to look at these things and say, ah, uh, you know, I, I'm afraid to touch it. I'm afraid to, you know, break it. I'm going to avoid the warranty. Well, no, you're not. And inevitably, this stuff goes into boxes. And I just reached down into some of my boxes down here and just pulled these out. And I was like, hey, check this out. I can do this. And I, d I was able to. Well, anyways. All in all, this is a pretty scary, monstrous thing out there. So with that being said, I'm going to say goodbye. Hope this little eight minute video will uh, pass a little bit of your time by. Um, no, I didn't do any, as you can see here, any videos on how to put this together because it required two hands and it was pretty re repetitious. So there was nothing really of value except for making, making sure that you deal with static electricity. That was an issue. So with that being said, the next video I want to do is a software based video. Uh, back on that that uh, M.2 NAS I built. So hopefully you guys will see that. Take care. Have a great week. God bless.